Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this video is going to start with a bang. This is a supernova that's actually right in the middle of our own solar system, an event that's never going to happen because our sun is not massive enough to go supernova. But I wanted to kind of give you an example of what it may have looked like if our sun was more massive. Now by now many of you already know that when a supernova like this occurs, it usually leaves something behind and there's actually a little sun nova remnant as it's called that's left behind here. This is usually um, one of two things, either a black hole if the star is super massive, well okay not super massive but massive enough, or more often it's actually what's known as a neutron star. Although in most cases these neutron stars are also called pulsars because they are so active and filled with so much energy that they actually pulsate um, a kind of a jet that we can detect from Earth. Now, one of the most famous pulsars and one of the most well studied is actually, let's go and find it, um, located not that far away in, in astronomical terms, in a location known as Crab Nebula right there. And this is something that we can actually see from Earth if we have um, even a small telescope. And right in the middle of this nebula, there's actually a little star that you might see. And that's of course the remnant from this particular supernova that happened approximately a thousand and one years ago, uh, known as Crab Pulsar. So I'm going to try to see if I can maybe very gently approach it, although, okay, it's not really working, so I'm going to have to cheat a little bit and just jump directly to it. And so there is that pulsar. And as you can see, it's pulsating with these two really powerful astrophysical jets. So normally, um, this is kind of what we expect to happen. Basically, a supernova creates a neutron star and you get this beautiful creation that's uh, very, very powerful in the middle. But we've realized for many years now that a lot of the nebula and a lot of the supernova don't seem to have the remnant in the middle for some reason. In most cases, we assume that it's because it's a black hole and it's really hard to see. But a very recent study uh, may actually give us a completely different reason, and this is super, super interesting. The study that you can find in the description below talks about the um, absolutely accidental discovery of this beautiful photo that you see right here on the screen that kind of shows a very beautiful supernova remnant um, with an unusual projection right here. And this is actually a tail of a speeding cannonball that's a pulsar or a neutron star. And the National Radio Astronomy Observatory actually created this beautiful simulation that shows you what may have happened. So we had the supernova and the pulsar actually got pushed away by the supernova and for about 5,000 years it was trying to reach the edge of the uh, nebula cloud. Then it escaped while dragging a lot of the material with it and actually created this beautiful tail that we see today. And this was uh, due to the very strong magnetic uh, forces that are at work here, because it's also what's known as a magnetar. It's also very, very powerful magnetically. And so this is how they explain this beautiful image that we see here. And by the way, you can find the video that I just played in the description below as well. But the idea here is absolutely brilliant and allows us to actually explain why a lot of the times we don't see anything in the middle. It's really because for some unknown reason, when a supernova occurs, like for example in this case right here in the middle of our own solar system, it doesn't happen in as symmetrical matter as we expect it to. So in other words, the actual remnant in the middle ends up a little bit away from, uh, let's just say, where you would see the center of mass. And because it's basically not in the center anymore, which is really weird when you think about it, because it's basically the star exploding, right? And the star itself ends up having its center misaligned. And that accelerates the uh, centerpiece, which is the remnant, and in this case it would be a neutron star, and then pushes it so hard that it ends up traveling at speeds of um, over a thousand kilometers a second, which means that it basically is going to escape our galaxy. And this is how these objects become so-called cannonballs. So this object right here um, is moving around a thousand kilometers per second right now, and it's going to be escaping our galaxy and uh, will one day um, end up in a completely different galaxy. And what's really cool about this is that um, this was once again found completely by accident by the so-called citizen scientists from um, the program known as Einstein at Home. And they've discovered this object and they were able to help analyze it 
and of course brought it to the attention of scientists that later published the paper. Now, um, you might also be wondering how big all of this is. So this right here is approximately 52 light years across, and this tail is about 13 light years. And just to give you a little bit more relevant scale here, so if this is the pulsar, then this here is approximately the distance to the nearest star from Earth. So this is about 4.2 um, light years. So that's kind of how far away things are in this particular region now. And it only took this object about 5,000 years to move this far, and obviously in the next few hundreds of thousands of years, and even after that, it's going to escape our galaxy and uh, become an intergalactic object. Because basically this object is also moving at a speed of about 1125 kilometers per second, which is four times faster than the speed of the sun around the galaxy. So that's why it's now known as a cannonball. But it's still not entirely clear how exactly these cannonballs get this ridiculous velocity, because when we really think about it, the actual center of the object is still uh, where the remnant is. So we don't really know what makes supernova to have such an unusual shape where an object can actually acquire these ridiculous velocities. It's basically like something pushing uh, an object, the mass of the sun, to uh, reach a velocity of about, well, 1000 kilometers per second. That requires a lot of energy and a lot of gravity. So whatever is happening with the actual supernova is still a mystery to us. In other words, we don't really understand how supernova happen and what really happens inside of them either. We just know the results that we see afterwards. So this is also one of the biggest mysteries uh, of modern astronomy. But obviously, as we discover more about neutron stars and supernova, and as we learn more about the actual universe itself, we'll finally be able to answer what's really happening with these pulsars, these neutron stars, and why is it that some of them move so fast, but some of them, like this one right here, Crab Pulsar, end up staying right in where they were to begin with. So on that note, it's basically a mystery, but you can still check out the paper in the description below to read what the scientists discovered. On that note, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. Space out and as always, bye-bye.